let's uh, get back to where we were uh, we were looking at this operator uh, the energy function so I actually went through the paper afterwards so this is no longer uh, first time reading uh, yeah I just uh, yeah I just went through it so you know like, like a, a gentle recap we we want to remove pixels that are you know in a judicious manner in a content aware manner we want to keep the stuff that we want that you know are the, are the prime focus of the image and get rid of everything else uh so you know that's what they say you know intuitively we need to remove unnoticeable pixels that blend with surroundings so if you have a, a region in the image which is very flat not a lot of changes then you want that to be you know even if you remove pixels of a bunch of pixels in that place you wouldn't notice any uh, difference like your consumption of the image would not be affected human consumption which is what we would what we usually work for so this so they say you know they've uh, they've tried out this very simple energy function which is you know an energy of an image which they've denoted by e1 of i i will explain why the one comes is just you know gradient in the x direction gradient in the y direction and they've just added it up so you know uh, what do they mean by gradient when it comes to an image uh, differences of pixel intensities from one pixel to the next so you know uh, if you want uh, uh, yeah if you want me to show you i guess we can create a new page somehow there's no place here did i create one or not yeah okay yeah so in this place so let's assume uh, we have uh, uh, so assume this is our image or you know a, a place in the image and you want to uh, and this is your x comma y which you want to find which you know is the region of interest right now you want to find out you know like what exactly is the change in of the you know image intensities over here so you know uh, let's say at each uh, place in the image the in the pixel intensities are denoted by e uh, sorry i x comma y and uh, um yeah and you know you want to see based on everything around it you want to see uh, what's the basic what's basically the change of this particular gradient so there are a bunch of ways to do that a very naive way to do it would be you know just take this x plus one comma y let's just label these things for brevity uh this would be x minus one uh y plus one this is getting too small i should just probably label them here yeah that's much better uh, y plus one okay so you know you've got all these uh, pixels here and you want to find out what is the you know what is the, how much change is there so if if the entire thing had if all these read if all these pixels had the same value uh, the gradient should be zero right because there is no change nothing is changing in the image uh, but that's uh, not usually the case in most images so what you have is something like you know there'll be some various changes here there uh, you know you might have a line or something like that so one way to do it is you know uh, uh i of x plus one comma y minus i of x y that is one way to do it you know just normal you know consider a straight line and a function and a one-dimensional function on the number line what would how what is the rate of change of the function the value at this point minus the value at this point divided by the distance between these two points which is one in this one unit in this case you know simple calculus so you know uh, and uh, so there is this idea that the the two-sided uh, limit is much more better is the much better approximator of the differential so what is instead done in practice is they take i x plus one comma y minus of i x minus one comma y so they take this guy use a different color maybe so yeah, they, they take this guy and they subtract it from this guy. Yeah, they take this and they subtract it from this pixel. Now, 
uh, you know this is this is pretty one dimensional uh, you know it it's only capturing information that is in this uh, that is in the uh, the horizontal direction but you know you could also have some sort of values over uh, in the upper pixels and the lower pixels so there are things called uh, sobel filters and uh, there's another famous one called privet and stuff like that we will we'll look at it when we are, when we come to implementation that's uh, not uh, our problem right now so let me get, just get rid of all this or maybe i should keep it for now yeah so uh yeah, anyways, uh, where were we? Go back to my highlighter. Yeah, so this is the energy function, you know? So what they've done is they have uh, taken, uh, this is the, this i x plus one, y minus i x minus one y. This is basically dou by dou x of i. So this is the uh, derivative in the x direction and you, and you know, you can uh, probably guess it's for some reason zoomed in. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you know, you can guess for what's going to be the case for the y case. It is going to be i y x comma y plus one minus i x comma y minus one. It doesn't matter, you know, you, it doesn't matter which you take first. It should basically be mod because changes don't really have you know, you don't care about the magnitude of the change. You just want to know that there is a change over it. You know, so this is basically uh, what you have as dou by dou y of the image. Now, what, so they've added these two things to get the overall change, you know. So if there is an edge like this and there, if there's an edge like this, you would like to have sort of, you know, a, the, a knowledge that there is some sort of a structure like this or something like that. So... That's what they've done in the paper. That is what that is the explanation of the energy function. Now, uh, so this part just explains. Uh, so the next paragraph just explains these things that we've already thought of. So I'll just uh, go through it and I'll make a couple of corrections that I um, got wrong last time. So given an energy function, you know, assume we. Uh, so we need to basically reduce the width or increase whatnot. But now let's look at reduction. So one thing is, uh, you know, uh, they have, uh, they first discussed what happens in, in F, which is they've just removed all pixels of low energy in this case, uh, probably use a highlighter here. Yeah. And, um, what else? Yeah. So that's what they say, you know, they, if you, if you remove the pixels with the lowest energy in ascending order, it just destroys the rectangular shape of the image, you know, which we, we already, uh, looked at. Now, um, you know, if, and then, you know, you say, uh, if you like what we looked at in, in E where they picked each row and they picked out an image from that and they picked out a pixel from that, you preserve rectangular structure, but now you create all these weird artifacts because, you know, uh, you have to remember that every time you get rid of a pixel, like suppose this is the image. And then you just get rid of this pixel. The image doesn't, you know, the image doesn't become like this. What happens is all these values just move ahead, move to this location or, or the other way around from this way. So basically the rectangular structure is destroyed is what they're pointing out. And then, you know, they go to uh, cropping. So apparently what they've done in cropping is, so they've looked at this energy function and they have seen that in this part of the image and in this part of the image, the energy, you know, this possibly the sum total of energy is the lowest. So they've just cut, off, cut out those parts. So they're finding out the parts of the image that have low energy and they're cutting them out is what's happening. So, and then they uh, look at, uh, you know, what happens with columns and uh, seem, you know, they explain why you need each one. So, yeah, and then uh, they, yeah, and then so this is basically the amount of energy that is preserved after you uh, uh, get rid of, uh, you know, you get rid of certain uh, pixels or seams or whatever your strategy is. It's not actually the amount of energy, it's the average energy of pixels. So when you, uh, you know, when you, uh, when you, when you remove the optimal, so the, the, these, there are two lines over here, 
both optimal and uh, pixel so optimal corresponds to f and pixel corresponds to e that's one way to think of it they both look they're both are pretty close and the average energy rises because you know if you, you have a bunch of numbers basically and you're removing the lowest of them so the average obviously rises pretty fast so that's the explanation for that and then uh, you know seam is doing pretty good and you know column does column does really bad because of this constraint that uh, you know you have to pick out straight lines from top to bottom so you lose a lot of high energy content possibly as well so because of that column does bad and crop is the worst because uh, you know i mean uh, intuitively it's just bad because you this is not even content aware this is basically you know just find the region that has the lowest energy uh, but there could be lots of high energy content for example when they remove this there is lots of high energy content over here so yeah so yeah that's the explanation for figure three now uh, you know now they basically uh, formally define what a seam is okay so this is pretty important to look at and uh, you know uh, reading mathematics in research papers can be a bit daunting but uh, yeah let's 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 do it together so formally they say you know let i be an n by m image you know so suppose i'll just get rid of this stuff I wonder if it would be quicker if I just got rid of this entire page and then I went here and then I added a page. Yep, that works. <laughs> okay, so, so you know, let's go to the definition. Where is this? So they say formally I is an n by m image and they define a seam a vertical seam sx as uh i'll just write this first one to n such that for all i X of uh, I think I minus X of I minus X of I minus one is less than equal to one. So this is what they say. Now uh, you know there are three parts to this thing. You know, like I've marked out. Okay, and there's another thing where X is uh, mapping from one to n to one to m. Okay, so let's go through this pretty carefully now. So, of the function x of i, initially, x of i, uh, you know, okay, let's just draw the image. This is the image, okay? There are n, uh, uh, yeah, there are n rows and m columns. <laughs> I forgot that suddenly. Yeah, so there are n rows and m columns. So x of i is a mapping from one where, you know, the input, the domain is from uh, one to n. So the domain is basically any row, you know, choose a row is what uh, x is saying, you know, first choose a row and put it in x. And what it is going to return is a value in m, you know, a value from one to m. So if you give it a row, x of i is going to return to you some pixel here like this. Okay, this is what is going to happen, is what this function mapping says. So let's go through this again. So x is the function that takes uh, the domain of x is 1 to n, you know, which are the each of the rows of the image, and then they point to a pixel in that row. So you give it, say, you know, you give it uh, maybe x of 1, and it gives you, say, 23. And then you give x of 4, and it gives you 22. And then you give x of 2, it probably gives you 49. You know, some, it, so basically this is the idea. From, from 1 to n, you choose a row first, and then x is going to give you some pixel. Now, how is it, how is it going to give you the pixel? We'll look at it uh, pretty soon. Now, okay. So now, 
um yeah this is extra fine okay now let's look at uh so i'll just circle everything that's important here this is the first one this is the second one and then this guy here is the third one okay so the so okay yeah so this we've already looked at now let's look at this so a seam is basically defined as a collection of xi comma i okay a seam so you it's it you think of it like this from and then i goes from one to n look at this these two uh, conditions so basically a seam is x one comma one x two comma two x three comma three so on I should, i'll probably write this below to make this more uh, you know it look like a seam x3 comma 3 so now knowing what x is you know we should think of what this means so x1 comma 1 is some pixel in the first row because one is fixed you know the the one is fixed so it's in the first row and uh, it is some pixel in this row so it is that's it's a so basically what this seam is saying is is the seam is defining a set of pixels in every single row of the image like this it's just defining uh you know it's defining a path from top to bottom okay now we've gotten the second part as well the third thing you know really uh, uh settles this down now what they want is x of i minus x of i minus one should be less than or equal to one the absolute difference of this what does this do suppose x of 1 is 4 okay the first point in your uh, seam is 4 comma 1 let's say it is somewhere over here okay now when you have to choose x of 2 uh you know you have x of uh, so you have this condition that x of 2 minus 4 is less than or equal to 1 so the only choices for x of 2 are, if anyone wants to guess, 3, 4, and 5. No, you, the, you get, only if you plug in these values are you going to get uh, this condition satisfied. If, you, if x of 2 is 3, it's 3 minus 4, which is uh, the absolute value is 1. 4 minus 4 is 0. So basically what it's saying is you can only choose one of these three connected pixels. And this is how it preserves the rectangular shape. So if you had, uh, if you did not have this uh, rule, you would pick pixels in this manner. Something like this. But because you have this rule, you're going to pick pixels, you know, which are very close to each other. So it's going to look more smooth is the rule. So that is what the, it, the, the mathematics is saying. So let's look at it again, you know, so S of X uh, is, uh, as my highlighter. Yeah, so S of X is, you know, a collection of points from I equal to one to N. So for all rows where, uh, you know, and it's a collection of points such that this condition is satisfied. You know, I wrote it down here, set of all points X I comma I, which means one pixel in each row and only these three, uh, it's it's only the bottom three pixels which are nearest to it are allowed to be chosen is what it is saying now uh you know similarly if y is a so now they define a horizontal seam as well i would you know you should probably uh try and work this out on your own you know in the exact same way that i uh, explained uh, vertical seam you should probably try and work out horizontal seam on your own it shouldn't take you too long so uh and then um so yeah, I mean, this thing is pretty intuitive. So what would be the pixels? So now you've all these things define pixel locations. You have to remember that very carefully. These things just still only define pixel locations, x1, comma 1, x2, comma 2, whatever these values of x1, x2, x3 are, these just define pixel locations. Now to get intensities, you just need to, you know, plug them into the into the image so instead of doing this you know assume you have an array sx uh, with which is this which is the collection of all these points 
the pixels are basically IF, the pixel values are basically the image SX, uh, it's the seam in the image, that's pretty intuitive. That's what they said, you know, the pixels of the path are basically uh, I of the scene. Now, uh, and then they mentioned that, you know, all the pixels of the image are shifted left or up to compensate for the missing path, which is what we thought about. And here they give a bunch of, uh, you know, like bunch of, uh, you know, just some more math stuff. Basically, where's my, where's my highlighter? Uh, yeah, so, you know, if you, if you replace K with zero, what's going to happen? I mean, uh, you should you should probably uh, try to think of this yourself as well. Suppose, you know, okay, so uh, I'll just explain what they mean by K. They have this rule, right? X of I minus X of I minus one. Mod of that is less than or equal to one. In general, you can have the same rule. Uh, less than or equal to some K. Now here, because K is one, you have this connectedness. You have this, you know, this, uh, Suppose uh, these are all the pixels. You know, if you start here, you can only go here. And then from here, you can only go here. You have this connectedness. Now, if you don't have this, and if K is say zero, for example, what's going to happen is from here, from this pixel, you're only going to be able to come down. Because when you go here, the value is going to be one. So that's more than zero. So this is what we had for the column case. This is what they did for removing columns. So, you know, what they mean is, you know, you don't need to have a separate algorithm. You just need to vary the values of K and, uh, you know, finish your job. And then they say, if, you know, if K is greater than uh, one, you will have basically disconnected pixels and all that, which makes sense to us, which that's all right. We could try and work with different K values. Now, uh, you know, uh, yeah, so now basically the next thing they say is what, what do they mean by the cost of the seam? So by cost of the seam, they mean, you know, they, they, uh, they take the energy at each point and they add it up. So remember that S of X was the seam. I of S of X is the intensity of the pixel at that seam. E of I is the energy function of the image. E of I of S of X is the energy or the gradient at the, at those scenes. And uh, if you want to find out the total energy for the, all the pixels in the scene, you just sum over all the pixels. That's all. That's what they're saying here. Look at this. So, you know, we can define the cost of the scene as uh, the summation of individual pixel energy and uh, yeah, individual pixel energy along the scene. And obviously the optimal seam S star is the minimum of all those scenes. So you will have a bunch of seams, right? If you have an image, you're going to have uh, a bunch of themes. You know, one goes like this, this, one is somewhere over here, something like that. Now the minimum, all of these have their own energies, each one. Okay, I should probably depict it by capital E. So all of them have their own energies. You pick the one with the smallest one. Suppose if this is the minimum one, that is what you remove first and so on and so forth. And uh, yeah, so now it's, uh, yeah, so this is what they're talking about, energy functions. So before we implement, so until now we've got energy functions and you know what exactly a seam is and stuff. So, uh, Let's, let's, before, you know, let's, before doing all this, let's look at what energy functions, you know, actually look like. Let's implement an energy function and uh, see what it, uh, you know, what it looks like. So, let me open my uh, Jupyter terminal, I mean, a Jupyter notebook, sorry. Uh, is this visible? Yeah, it works. So, uh, you know, uh, let's get started. I'll import some essentials. What do I need? I definitely need NumPy. Uh, I need OpenCV. So you can do all this using NumPy, but it's 
much slower and uh, you probably need to do a lot of uh, if you wanted to get faster you need to you know implement much heavier versions of these convolutions so yeah let's just use OpenCV for now uh, now I'm going to plot stuff so, where is that hopefully I have everything installed um okay let's go so I have a bunch of you know images so let's just uh, look at them see to the time read uh, if I can move away so this is a picture of Sebastian Vettel uh, at uh, the French Grand Prix. So let's just, you know, do this. Okay, yeah, I have. How do I add a cell? Yeah. So I, I just need the helper function here. Maybe functions, maybe I'll need more. So one thing I need to do is I need to reverse these color color channels because OpenCV uh, reads them in a different way. You no, know? it it's not exact. So you would like it to be RGB, but OpenCV reads it in the exact opposite way. BGR, you know, blue, green, and red. So you need to fix that. So what do you need to do? If this function basically it uh, reverses the uh, Color channels of image by a better problem. Okay, uh, let's focus on this later. Uh, what parameters do we have? The image, which is a NumPy array. And we have, uh, yeah, and then it returns a NumPy array. Uh, Okay, so I mean, I just you know, so uh, we don't actually need to do much here, we just need to return the image. So keep the first dimension as it is, keep the second dimension as it is, and the third dimension I'm going to clip it and you know, return it. This should work. So right now, I'm just going to do a reverse channel okay. okay it's inserting okay um why is it doing this do i have insert I, I, I hit on insert by mistake. So reverse channels, and then now we can uh, show Sebastian. Okay, so should work. Yeah, okay. Works so we can see uh, the red Ferrari. I think it's the 2019 car. Looks to me like that. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, so we this is the this is at uh, Magni Court. Uh, we have this uh, uh, the trademark French Grand Prix uh, runoff areas, you know, with with the blue uh, stripes. Uh, so it's 
uh, very pretty going to be challenging for us to find a vertical seam in this case. So our job today is basically, you know, find the energy function for this guy here. Okay. So now uh, let's write our energy function. Uh, yeah. I don't want space to look at everything. Energy function, and we just need the image. Uh, and what do I want to write a top string here? Okay, let's do this. Calculates and return the energy uh, by using the magnitude of the class derivative okay so the parameters are just the image, which is again and one by array and it returns and one by array. And this is the energy function. okay now what do we want this person to do let's first define i use sobel because i'm not sure if opencv has uh privet so you know in in any if you're having any difficulties you know with working out these things always just you know go and look at the uh the documentation so let's let's do that and cv2 so well this should be so well so i think cv2 does not give okay so it gives sobel and shard so let's look at sobel which is what i want to be using uh so yeah i mean this is pretty much it so yeah, like I said, you know, this is how it works. It 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 takes uh so this these values here are basically subtracting stuff from the pixel on the left hand on the left side of the uh, of our interest pixel, and these guys are adding it up, you know, the ones on the right. So you so the one I showed you in on the PDF was just you know f of x plus one comma y minus f of x minus one comma y but then they have you know this two factor here which is just basically giving more weightage to the middle row and uh, but still also considering everything that's happening around the pixel so this is what is going to happen and this is for vertical and this is for uh sorry this is for horizontal this is for vertical one of those two yeah right yeah so yeah we, we we'll just go back to our uh, we just go back to our uh, Jupyter notebook. So we we have the Sobel filters. Uh, so we need to do both Sobel X, which is uh, uh, okay. If I remember right, it was image, and then we need to tell this person where to end up all this was from the documentation uh, nothing that I'm doing fancy here uh, similarly I'm just going to copy this person over here so so will why it has to be and you need to change this uh, Yes, and we're effectively done, I guess. And you know, now you just need to return 
the norm of these two yeah uh, we're good to go let's get rid of everything else so you know let's look at everything again we have we got our two filters which basically as we looked at the documentation uh, compute the derivative and as expressed as you know written in the paper we find the norm we add these two up and we are good to go so this is our function now let's you know uh, let's work out some what's up what happens when you put the vettel picture on this i need two of these one for the original and one for the energy function uh, what do I want the figure size to be? Uh, maybe 15 with 5 should do the trick. If I'm not wrong, I think 15 with 5 should do the trick. Now, so this is just going to be. Oh, wait, I just have to do I am sure here. I hope I'm getting this right though. Do I have to do anything? No, I just, I just have to do I am sure. Anyways, so. Here is SV as usual, and then I need to say dot title forgetting set title is uh, wow original image, and then uh, another I am sure. And this time we need to make it work on energy function and we need to send in SV and yeah, I think we're good to go. Uh, energy function and then we do the plot plot okay let's see what happens yeah 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 okay uh this doesn't look very good why is it showing ah okay it doesn't look good but yeah i mean the so you know if if you look at all these flat regions it's giving you a bunch of it looks like you know the energy there is a lot of energy over there that's what it looks like but you know but if the best way to get an idea of what it's showing is to subtract 255 from this so that we can get an inverted version of this and that will actually tell us you know it's uh, i think it should tell us the actual uh, style of the car yeah, I mean, this is working pretty well. You can see lots of the detail of the car, but you know, we missed out on all the stripes, which is not a pretty, uh, you know, good thing. So let's do one thing. Let's increase this kernel size and see if that makes any difference. Yeah, I mean, this is much better. We've gotten everything. This, this literally uh, looks like one of those cartoon drawings now so yeah we've, we've gotten everything so yeah i mean we're done this is what we wanted you know so this is what our energy function looks like now look at you know the, the road doesn't you can, you can probably run a horizontal scene through the road here and get rid of all these pixels and uh, you know i think you should also be able to get run a horizontal scene through these runoff area strikes but not through this stuff. It would be fun to actually implement the scene carving algorithm on this, uh, this particular image. So, yeah, I mean, I, I really like this. This looks good. This is an energy function. It's very indicative of where the most important parts of the image are. If you look at it, uh, it doesn't, you know, it's black for all the road and stuff like that, but you know, it gives the edges of the car pretty beautifully. It even captures the shadow here and stuff. So, yeah. Uh, 
yeah i mean let's i think i have a few more pictures so let's just copy this thing and just work with a few more pictures just to see what things look like so here i'm just going to instead of i am sure i'm going to do reverse channels uh i am read uh i forgot the name not i am read cv2 or i am read what am i doing cv2 but i am read uh i think i have one jpeg now i just want to copy this person hopefully i'm doing it right and pass it here yeah look at this okay not very good so this is the famous moment when cristiano scored a brilliant free kick against uh, james something against portsmouth and uh, this was immediately after he scored that goal so this is wayne rooney and patrick severa running towards him so you know you can it's probably not very visible in the picture but there is uh, but the uh, energy function clearly captures some of the uh, changes in uh, pixel values over here on the top of the image which has uh, not very good for us ideally we don't even need the background really because it's not at all uh, you know it's none of our not any of our business to you know to keep the background it's not the object of interest in this particular picture so let's do the reverse of what we did for the first image and then just get rid of the kernel size get i mean make it smaller so i won't touch the sebastian thing let's just work with this yeah this is uh too less but not as bad as that so there should be better ways to do this this but this is pretty good if you think about it it's it's pretty indicative of what we want in this image so i guess a better way to implement the function would be to even uh, you know have an additional parameter here that takes in kernel size for each image so that i don't have to you know do this uh, you know this kind of hacky way of uh, working with this so well, let's go to some other pictures i have a good rafael nadal picture i think that should work well Rafa, yes, I guess that's what I call it. And there you go. This is Rafael Nadal and Roland Garros, his favorite court to play. This is pretty interesting. You know, you, you we've gotten everything we need here. You know, for, right from Rafa himself to his racket to the uh, boundary lines on the court to the ball to the shadow. this is very very good but you could also say this is a kind of a you know an easy example because the background is completely uh, uniform so yeah so let's just uh, do it again i have uh, this is a, this is a very good picture right now the one i'm going to load uh So this is uh, Taylor Swift in her uh, reputation uh, tour. So she's doing a, a set where you know there's she's doing a a bit where there's rain on the set, and you can see that this is this is exactly what we need. You know, like we have Taylor Swift, and then we have you can see that you know the the gradient function uh, even captures the raindrops and stuff. And I, I I'm not sure if you can look at this very clearly. but there is there are lights here which the energy function captures as well so yeah i mean this is pretty good we have our energy function right now so basically that's what we did you know we took the gradients and we added it up um i just remembered that in the paper they don't specifically mention whether you have to take the l2 norm or the l1 norm so let us try just returning 
local x plus small y Mm-hmm. Is there a change? What is it asking me? Mm. Yeah, okay. So when you don't take the square norm, it's not it's much more cleaner, is what I would say. Like for example, here the edges are much more well defined. Uh, as compared to when you when you took the squared norm with the squared norm this was completely filled up so let's look at what these images would do would they correspond to, uh, this looks much better on the 3 by 3 pixel level as well this looks much better you can actually see all the uh, you know you can see lots of detail I yeah I think this is a much better one for uh, our purposes what happens if you do uh, 3 by 3 now for this nah okay not bad probably i would prefer the squared norm over this for this kernel size but i really like the 5 by 5 version irrespective of the noise it's uh, creating I think it's uh, manageable to work with that much noise uh, because these edges are pretty well defined compared to the noise. So in our in our algorithm, we're going to get rid of this stuff anyways. So yeah, let's look at Rafa. Okay, I like this one as well. It's much, much more it's a, it's capturing the details in a much better way the the you know the, just the manhattan norm not the squared norm so i think yeah i i made a mistake by implementing the squared norm yeah i mean this just confirms it this is much better it captures the energy gradient in a much better way so yeah you know these tiny things make a lot of difference when you're working you i just completely forgot you shouldn't square it i just this is what i usually do for other stuff so but i just remembered i i took a look at the paper and i just i was going to close it off and i remembered we actually had to add these things not uh, square and add them yeah so that is that for now uh let's uh let's close off We'll, we'll look at uh, the algorithm and the implementation some other time.